all right youtube so today i'm gonna be showing you some new products i received um i got two of them so let me show you this one first so these are their three inch pod lights these are their newest pod lights they have um so it comes with some covers which i wanted some amber lights and these covers So depending on what you want to run, either this one, this one would work as a spot. This one has a combination of a spot and a flood. Um, to put the cover on, you just remove these four Allen screws, place it on there. I'm going to run them with these covers. So it's nice that they give you the option on how you run them. So it comes with some mounting hardware. <laughs> your harnesses um, I'll show you guys how simple they are they're plug-and-play almost um, these lights do come with a plug this is the LED plug and it goes straight to the harness like that so I'm gonna be running them a little different but I'll show you how simple they are to connect um, I also got this switch panel it's a eight gain rgb um so depending on what color you want to run it let, allows you to switch through them it does say that they're waterproof this is their newest design as well aluminum bill um they are also bluetooth so pretty pretty neat product comes with your instructions So this is going to help a lot with wiring stuff. Got a few stickers here. Um, this is your, oh, I'll show you the control. So pretty, pretty small, feels pretty well built, I can't, I don't think it's plastic. Looks like it's aluminum housing there, which is nice. Makes it nice and sturdy. So, a few mounting hardware, wiring, zip ties. This is the main box. This is where all the wiring goes to. Let's see if I can open it. So, all the relays are built in already. Pretty small compared to their other boxes that I was seeing on the videos this is a big change it has changed a lot so this pretty much allows you to just wire into this so you got all these fuses oh, so I got different fuses I wonder if I can I might have to go through the manual like if I needed to to go higher on the fuses if I could just change them but I'll show you guys how to install it I'm gonna be putting it on the Can-Am all right so I'm prepping the Can-Am just want to let you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna be removing the seat um, I don't have the quick releases on the front harnesses so I'll have to figure out a way to get this seat out of the way um, all you have to do up from there I'll remove it all the way that way we can access this side panel um, so I've done that a few times on my videos so I won't do it on this one but I'll show you the aftermath of when I open that part up the seat all off and if you recall these ones you just pull off so let me undo that so this one down here is your accessory. Um, the middle one, the middle red one, is your hot. That one's always hot. So accessory, that one only turns on when you have the key and you turn the switch on. 
So whatever is plugged into that, that will only work when that when you have the key. This one will, if you plug into this one, this one will run, will turn on whenever. Um, your top one is your negative. So I'll show you, I'll bring the pods out and I'll show you real quick um, how easy it is to install those pods. Get started. I'm gonna do a quick hyperlapse on how to change this out. The toolkit does come with its own Allen wrench to change out the lens. So we're gonna be swapping to this lens. So there it is, pretty easy swap. Um, I'm not sure if I did mention these feel like they're really well built. Um, hopefully the seal holds on them, but I'll let you guys know. I'm planning on running them as, I'm gonna try them out first, but my plan is to put them on as um, a chase light type of light. Um, but I'll try it out first, make sure it works out before I let you know if I'm running it as one or not. If it doesn't work out, I'll probably throw them in the front. So to access these, um, these are all size um, 10. So this is just gonna be a quick example um, of how easy it is. So your wiring harness, all you need to run is your positive and your negative. Um, so let's add, I'm gonna access our pot. Just so I can show you guys the uh, pods turning on. Loosen this one up as well. I think it's gonna be it's it's gonna fit well enough to show you this video but from the looks of it this is a little too big if I was to run with this one I'd probably try and cut the edges here just to make it fit perfectly in there it doesn't need much it looks like if I was to trim the circle just a piece here it'd fit perfect but since I'm not gonna be running it this way, and it's just to show you guys, um, I'll keep it like that for now. enough to run at least so this is my negative here so get your negative wire same thing oh, I kind of heard that really turn on or get power all right so we should have power to this so you can see it's giving me a red so if if I was to be connecting these, all I do is run these wires through the bottom if they're going to the back or through the bottom here it, to the front. Um, so there's no splicing, there's nothing. That's why I say they're pretty much plug and play. So it comes with their own plug. So this is from the harness, this is from the pod. Um, and all you do is connect them also oh, my switch must have been on so red means that it's on um, if I was if I didn't get the switch panel and I was just running these what I would do is I'd switch over to I would switch over to the, one of the rocker switch so like the regular switches um, I'm not a fan of, of switching to the circular ones so it already comes wired for two lights. So this is the other plug. This is my other pod. And this is my switch right here. So plug and play. There's my ambers. 
they are pretty bright for being daytime so this one I haven't changed the lens in on it so if you can see there the camera does pretty good with capturing it so easy so since I'm running the switch panel um, I won't be running them like this this is this would be like super easy to install you just run your wires connect your positive and your negative and you're good you're all I'm set. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all moved and we'll start working on the switch panel this is just in case you were to just get the pod lights it's one harness it hooks both of them up um, it doesn't get any easier than that I mean you don't have to mess with any wires bare wires or anything it's only your positive and your negative that go either here or to your battery um, if I was to run just the pods I'd connect my positive to the is it accessory I think it's a accessory um, that way it only turns on when the keys on and you hit the button for so it to pretty much on. what I'm doing is I'm separating my cables to um, to see what are the first things I have to install so the first thing I can see is that I'm first I have to figure out where the circuit control box will go um, so it's either gonna go somewhere in this area or if I want to put in near the battery back there um, I haven't decided yet but the reason you, it has to go either near this area or by the battery is because the cables they send you. So you got your cir circuit breaker here. A little wire goes to here. This is like your fuse. Um, so one wire goes to here, one wire goes to here. This other wire goes here. And then this one goes in here as well. Um, but the length of these wires isn't that that much so you have to stay near um, near a battery or a positive or a negative um, so I'll figure that one out um, once I figure that out then we'll figure out where we'll place this I kinda have an idea uh, most people run the same thing um, and I think it's like the best the best placement for it so I kind of figured out where I want it um, mine has a cover if you're can am stock and you might not have this covering this is empty space um, I got these covers because I run my amplifier here um, it's been in this location since I placed my audio um, it's been a good placement um, I was supposed to go back in and put some screws on it so it wouldn't move but it hasn't caused any issues um, so I just forgot and but it the amps just floats in here I might have to finally put something some type of screw to hold it in place but this section has like a perfect fitment right here so I think this is the area where I'm gonna go just because it is accessible by removing those plastic push pins um, on both sides and I feel like it's the perfect spot so I'll probably run my wires down through here and in through here and I'm gonna put this facing down so my wires go right there my positive and negative um, so it looks something like that I won't be using any of the harnesses to mount this I'll just go directly on these two I'll do my holes here in a little bit. I'll show you um, how I ran it. So I'm trying to make this video kind of short. It's kind of hard because um, it's kind of like a step by step in a way. So there's really no way to make it short. Just wanted to touch on this. Um, it does come with good instructions as well. And then I like that it shows you this one where your fuses are compared to these and one two three it shows you like the way they run um, but it does have 
this one is the red this one's for positive this one's for your negative the way I'm gonna run it, it it's with my long wire I'm gonna go here with my short wire that's going to the battery back up here so this one's gonna go here like this and then my positive my hot wire um, this is gonna go here this is like your circuit breaker your um, your fuse in a way it, it, it works just like like a fuse you can reset if it was to trigger off it's just a safety which is pretty nice um, and then your negative of course this one just goes straight to my negative so this one runs here this one runs here so I'll go go ahead and get all that all right, hooked so up. I ended up removing the little cover where I plan on running the switch assembly or control box so the way it's designed is so that your wires come out through this opening um, so if I was to mount it flush down like it it wouldn't really work out for me so that's why they include these um, harnesses or mounting harness so that this goes here and then you still have access to to the openings on the bottom right here if I wanted to mount this flush there has to be some sort of opening that if you see my markings here they're not exact but that's just to give me an idea um, so I would cut out these holes to kind of line up with these where the wires run through that way it stays flush because otherwise it wouldn't really be flush and then to access that it'd be impossible so if I was to make these holes here and set this here flush uh, the fitment will be perfect um, my wires will run through here through the back and straight into here where they go attached here so that's the plan I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, and I'll show you the outcome so I got it all cut up um, I use my Dremel you could probably use your razor blade if you don't have a Dremel um, these are the holes I cut and the reason for that if you didn't understand on my last video is to for this to sit here like this so it sits flush and now my wires can just let me put it right on it my wires can just go through these holes into the switch control <clears throat> um, there is a lot of different ways you can mount this this is the way I kind of preferred um, and for the space we had I didn't want to use any mounting brackets so you don't have to do it this way you can figure figure out where you want to place this um, it could go in the rear it could go in the front as long as it's near the battery or if you want to adapt some longer wires then you can place it wherever so you got like two of the wires mounted on here just to kind of show you again so my positive my negative and then they run straight to the back <clears throat> I'll tuck these to the bottom I did use tap screws that came with it and it the hold is really well um, if they were to get loose I'll just change out the screws for now I'm gonna run it like that um, you do have this accessory wire this one you could either tap into any wire that turns on with the key on so it goes here and or you could just run it to um, the main box I'm running it to since it has a, a wire that's always hot straight to the battery and then your accessory so however you prefer so this wire goes here and then your actual control your aux beam control that one is this one it's has its own wiring so this one goes here like that and the end is kind of like a plug so then this one would run to wherever your control is so these two are the main ones <clears throat> I will be wiring my whip lights to this um, just so I can show you guys how it works um, but so far everything's looking good now let's get this mountain
Uh, everything's taking form now. Um, what I'm gonna do is, if you remember the circuit breaker here, so I attach this one that's gonna go to the main battery, and then this one goes to that wire that's sitting right here. Um, oops, sorry. So this will eventually sit around this area, something like so. Um, I'll probably just zip tie it. What's neat is that it comes with these covers here and then it has this main cover. So it's kind of like a protector so nothing gets in there. Once it's under, nothing's getting in. So let me go ahead and attach this. I'm going to be using um, my accessory from, from here. The best way to do it is to have one of these. So I'll cut the wire a little bit, put this in there, and then that way I can just bolt it over there. Um, you don't want to be doing any, uh, I don't know how do we say, any ghetto work. Although mine's not professional, I try and keep it professional. Um, so you don't want to splice this wire and then bolt it up there just with nothing. Um, you want something reliable. These machines do vibrate a lot. So the more professional you can leave it, the best. Um, right now you do see a lot of cables. So this is what happens when you don't have a switch panel. Um, Every rocker switch uses wiring, and this this is what happens. So I'm currently using one, three, three of them, and all those wires come to this. Um, with the switch panel, I'll be able to remove most of those wires and just run them straight to the switch panel. Um, I think I'll be doing that further in the future. Um, and also, I could trim some of these wires that... The one you see here in this area is from the audio. It was my first wiring. And from right now, I can tell that I won't be moving anything. So I could trim all those wires and it will clear up a lot. Um, so just just an FYI. So let me do this and we'll get to it. That's about how it will go once again. Here's my circuit breaker. I'll probably just zip tie it like so um it was perfect fitment the negative wire was just long enough i'm glad it has a little bit of slack um same with the positive and then here's my accessory it goes into the last one here and they are labeled oh yeah they're labeled so we won't be wiring into here anymore we're all done with this part now this is the main focus so i'm gonna run some wires from my whips into this and we'll finish it up i wanted to show you how this turned out um that's mounted i mounted two wires to it one's for my whips the other one is just a harness for the pods um that i might be running as strobes um and then this wire I just need to run it to where I plan on putting the connector, which more than likely will go somewhere here. So that's what I'll work on next. I'll just wire, run the wire up there and then see if that's what I'm gonna do. But so far, clean setup there. All right, so I'm pretty much just doing some dry fitting um, this might be the section where I place it. The only thing is I need to tighten or at least this bolt right here because once I place it in place I won't have any access to that bolt. Um, this does run at an angle so depending on you you can either, either follow that angle or just keep it sort of straight. I'll probably tilt it a little bit. Um, because like this, it kind of faces you as a driver. <clears throat> so, I'm going to mark my spot holes and this is how we're going to run it. Um, one more thing, I was about to place the cover on. And it does come with some spare fuses. So, this is the cover. 
I'll put the cover on. In this video, I'm showing you how I'm doing it. I drilled, I drilled a hole here. Um, there's plenty of clearance to not hit anything. The reason for that hole is because when I mounted, I didn't want this wire just hanging on the side. Um, and I'm not scared to drill into the plastic here. So what I'm doing is I pass this one through there and then I'm going to work this little plastic piece or rubbery thing. Um, it's pretty flexible so I just have to get this through there. Um, if I need to make the hole a little bigger I will but just showing you what I'm doing that way I get a cleaner look so the cable goes right in there something like that I also did mark my holes and then I removed it from the bracket but it is it does take the this bracket does use four of these little screws right here um, so I put these in there just to test fit and I'm gonna remove them and put some Loctite in and then I'll put it back in the brace or bracket if you're not from Arizona it's we got really crazy weather here during the summer it's been really hot um, maybe in over the hundreds so starting to get windy it's really sunny on that side and then we turn this way and I don't know if you can see but there's a storm coming so we get a lot of monsoon this is monsoon season for us so this might turn into a little storm a little bit of lightning sometimes water it's just enough to dirty the cars but I'll keep working on this almost set it's not mounted yet I wanted to get my position before that way I can tighten these bolts that one and this one um, that way I don't have to mess with them. I did already put some Loctite in them. So I'm just going to tighten them down in place. And then I'll drill my using um, self-tapping screws that it came with. Um, do keep in mind to make sure that nothing's in the bottom. I already... It has enough to stick your hand in there to check. And I did. And it's a good spot for it. It's all bolted up pretty sturdy if it was to get loose I do have some extra bolts with nuts um, that I can attach as well um, but for now we'll run it this way got my attachment here my wire nice and clean tucked away that's a view from the back so now I just need to zip tie my wires get them all cleared and we'll be all done with this install there is the switch assembly with the cover the control the controller wired is pretty long so you do wanna um, tuck it somewhere all the excess probably do as I do and then I'm still gonna zip tie it up to something there's plenty of space down here under the dash to where you can put a zip tie to so this isn't dangling or if you leave it too too long it's, it could cause some safety issues you don't want it going down in the brake or gas pedal um, so I'll tuck it in somewhere back here and you can't even see it so just a few tips if you were to do something like this pretty much just putting everything together um, back together so I do have some zip ties I used make sure you use them doesn't hurt and here's the placement of it um, you won't be able to see it once I install these it, it covers up the only thing that's exposed is this section So there we have it got it installed let's see if it works this should be my one of my pod lights and then I also have my whips so we'll turn both of them on and let's see if 
they're working. So I'm ru running the Martian whips. And then this is the pod light. This won't be there. But I just wanted to show you guys that it's working. Um, this is kind of the idea I have. To clamp it here. I need a new mount. This mount didn't work out for me. Um, but I'll get it figured out and get the proper mount. Um, but this is kind of how what I'm shooting for. Eventually this will probably sit right on top of the cage here. Um, I just set it up this way just so you guys can kind of see what I'm aiming for. Um, a really cool feature on this is, so it's a solid light right now. Let's go over this way. And all you do is click this twice. And I believe this is my pod. So blue is pulse. This one's strobe. So I'm going to leave that one as strobe and then hit off. So it saves it. So it should be strobing right now. I'm going to turn off the whips so you guys can take a look. So this is what I'm going to use. Of course they're going to be amber. But I'm going to use that as my chase light. It's, it's really bright. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But it blinds me. Um, it would, it will have, it, this one's a spot, so I'm going to change it to the ambers, and the ambers do have a flood option, um, so it's going to be really nice. And then if I wanted my whips, to, my whips are a solid color, if I wanted my whips to, let me show you the, what this one does. Alright, so I'm testing the blue one, the blue one they call it momentary pulsed is strobes for them so what it does is you just press it kind of like if you were using a horn this is what you would use use it for you click it and it honks and then it, when, once you let it go it stops so there's a few different options you can use it on but I'll show you with the strobe light here so as soon as I release it it turns off um, any of these you can change the setting for so if I want my whips to strobe I'll do this it's saved right there so let me turn it off and then I'm gonna turn it back on and that's the strobe setting so they are together they are they run the same wiring that's why they're synced um, if I was to run them separately I could probably get them to unsync um, for a better strobe pattern but I really don't care as long as it's some type of strobe for safety um, the other thing is it does have a app so you can use these through Bluetooth um, Android or your iOS if you're Apple um, it gives you pretty good um, instructions so I won't go over them but it gives you even how to use the app, how to build your own colors and save them um, for the RGB. It also, if you don't want to use the app, there is ways to change this. Um, and it shows you here on the instructions. So the way you change the RGB color in here, you hold this one and the on and off. Once this lights up, you could either change this way or this way. So we'll keep this way. I'm holding this button down. So that's going to turn into yellow. Your greenish colors. Your blue colors. As soon as I let go, it'll stop in that color. So let's keep going. That's like your purple, pinkish, hot pink, red, orange. So you see that? And then this one is to go back. So this this one will take you back. So it should take me back to the red, the pink, the purple, the blue. So whatever color you want, as soon as you get to it, all you do is release the button. So I'll probably be using red. Not sure yet. Um, if you don't want to use the app, this is the way you do it. 
I'm sure it's easier on the app, but it's nice that they let you, they give you the option to be able to do it manually. So let me go to the blue that I want, something like that for now. Um, I'll eventually label these, but I want to clean this because I've been touching them. So I want to clean them before I stick something on there. Um, you also could run your on and off to one of these if you like. Some people remove this option and they do their radios. So you are able to just delete that one and go from here. And then that gives you the option to turn it on with your phone. So as long as the key's on, you can turn it on with your phone. So a lot of neat tricks you neat tricks you could do. Sorry. I am really tired. But I'm glad we were able to do this. Um So I will for sure keep you guys updated on on my chase light. Um I like I like that it's visible. That's going to be perfect, honestly. Um, the other one I was looking at was going to mount somewhere in the plate, but I feel like it's too low. And then my cage sits kind of low, so the options there weren't, weren't as great. And I really don't care for a long chase light, as long as I got something strobing back there for someone to see. And then for sure I'll have my whips. These are my trail whips. I still have to get some dune whips, some longer ones. These uh, I run, I leave them on there. They fit in the garage. But there you have it. Hopefully this video was worth it for you guys. Um, I know it, hey. I don't think I saved. I remember I put this blue. I don't think it saved, but oh well. Um, like I said, I hope this video helps some of you guys or gives you an idea of how to install it even better than I did. Um, it's my first time installing something like this. I I am no professional, but um, I'm willing to learn. And that's how we learn, by doing. So feel free to comment something you saw that I did wrong or something I could have done better. Um, any input is is appreciated um but yeah any questions let me know again this is from oxbean um honestly i feel like it's a great product so far let's see how long it lasts hopefully it lasts for years it does say it's waterproof so i don't do much water off-roading but sometimes it may um i'm gonna have to look into this it says it dim, dims, it's dimmable and it does it automatically. The backlight brightness of the switch panel is automatically dimmable according to the brightness variation of the surrounding environment. I don't know, I don't know how to test that out, but um, as soon as I play with it more, if you guys have questions, feel free to comment. Like I said, I'll, I respond to almost anyone. Um, I'm also easy to get to. A few people have contacted me on Instagram. So feel free to send me a few messages on there with any type of question.